One of the biggest difficulties students have when turning right is knowing when to start braking and turning the steering wheel, both when they're approaching the intersection with some speed or when they're turning after having stopped, like at a stop or red light. Let's start with the first one. When approaching with some speed, I start braking before the turn, while arriving at the intersection, until I reach the appropriate speed, which in a 90 degree turn should be about 15 to 25 kilometers per hour in normal driving conditions. Then I start turning the steering wheel when I see the left edge of the sidewalk more or less aligned with the lower right corner of my windshield. That's my reference point. Then I start accelerating when exiting the turn. Now let's go through that again. You brake before the turn as you're approaching the intersection and not in the turn itself. Braking too hard when turning might make you lose control. If you do need to brake, you should brake only slightly, unless there's an emergency, of course. Then when exiting the turn, you accelerate. Now, when I say that you should be at about 15 to 25 kilometers per hour, you shouldn't be staring at your speedometer when turning, because you obviously won't see what's happening in front of you anymore. You should be looking at where you want to go, and your brain will take care of the rest. If you do want to get an idea for your speed, Glance quickly at your speedometer before you reach the intersection and get your eyes back in front as soon as possible. You obviously won't be looking at that reference point forever. After a while, you'll be able to know when to turn and adjust your speed instinctively just by looking at the right place, but it can help when you're starting out. Students tend to stare a lot, so make sure you're still aware of what's happening all around you and don't focus only on that little spot. Now this reference point will vary according to your height and your vehicle, but it should be somewhere around there. Try to practice this before in a quiet place and find a reference point that works for you and your vehicle. It also depends on what is at the intersection. Like in this case, there's a parked bus, so I can't use the edge of the sidewalk as a reference point, because if I do, I'll turn too early and I'll hit the bus. In this case, I use the left edge of the bus's bumper. Here, I start turning when it's aligned with this construction panel. Basically, you turn when the lower right corner of the windshield is aligned with the leftmost edge of whatever obstacle is there, be it the sidewalk or whatever other obstacle. Keep in mind that speed is also very important in this case. If you're going too slow when you turn your wheel, you'll risk getting too close or hitting the sidewalk on the right. If you're going too fast, you'll risk losing control and slide towards the left. When turning after having stopped, students usually have two main problems. First, they don't look at the right place. They're staring at the sidewalk because they're afraid of hitting it, and because they're staring at it, they tend to go towards it. So don't look at the sidewalk, look at where you want to go, there. And second, they turn the steering wheel too much and don't accelerate enough. And because they don't accelerate enough, the vehicle is not going where they want it to go. So their reaction is to turn the steering wheel more. This is psychological. They want to go there, but they're not going there. So they continue turning the steering wheel while barely moving, thinking it will take them there. The steering wheel by itself won't take you anywhere. It will guide you there, but it won't take you there. The accelerator will take you there. If you don't have any speed, no matter how much you turn the steering wheel, you're not going anywhere. And to prove that, let me show you the most obvious thing ever. I'm here and I want to go there. I turn my steering wheel, but I'm not moving. So I turn it more, but I'm still in the same place. No matter how much I turn my steering wheel, if I don't have enough speed, or any speed in this case, to go where I need to go, I'll never go anywhere. Now I accelerate, and I'm going there. Now even from where I'm sitting here, I can hear you saying, this guy's completely crazy. But this is just to illustrate my point. Here it was absolutely obvious because I was completely stopped. But it's the same thing that happens when you're turning too slowly. You're not stopped, but you're still going too slow to have the right trajectory. So start by looking at the right place, then start accelerating, then turn the wheel. So after you've stopped, accelerate and start turning your wheel when you see your right mirror more or less aligned with the perpendicular sidewalk, or if there isn't one, align it where the sidewalk would be. Again, if there are any other obstacles, start turning when your mirror is more or less aligned with their leftmost edge. It also depends on the roundness of the corner of the sidewalk. If the corner is rounder, you'll have more room between you and the sidewalk than if it's sharper so you can start turning the wheel a bit earlier because your car will follow the curve of the sidewalk. If you're turning in a very tight situation, like here where the street is a two-way street and there's a truck stopped on the corner, try to do the turn more in the shape of an L instead of an arc. This is more or less the same situation we saw earlier with the bus. 
So you can use the same technique of starting to turn when you see the left edge of the truck's bumper aligned with the lower right corner of your windshield. If you turn in the shape of an arc, you risk hitting the truck. By turning more in the shape of an L, you're keeping your distance from the truck and you're giving yourself a better angle to enter the lane on the right. Basically what you're doing here is that you go further in a straight line and start turning your wheel later, but you turn it more. For example, when I'm turning here where I have more room, I turn the wheel three quarters of a turn. Here, I go a bit further and I turn it one complete turn. How much you'll need to turn it will depend on how tight the situation is. If you have enough room in your lane, you can also move a bit to the left. That will leave a bit more room between you and the truck. But make sure you don't overflow into the lane on the side. So to wrap it up, keep in mind that there are a lot of variables with everything when driving. So these reference points will vary according to a lot of different factors. They are good starting points to get you going. So practice and find whatever works for your vehicle in different situations. Also make sure to signal and do your verifications all around before every turn. There will be links in the video description for videos that are related to some topics I discussed here, so you can check them out if you want. In the next video, more about positioning yourself better before turning, priorities when turning, why you should always do your verifications, yields, staying centered in your lane before turning, and turning right at a red light. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.